We're Hops, Haunted Observations Paranormal Society. Welcome, Welcome to the to investigations the of the Haunted Observations Paranormal Society, otherwise known as Hops. Good. All right, let's go. My name is Greg Gardner. My fellow investigators are Kayla Denny and Thomas I've been, Fisher. I've been hospitalized. We have found ourselves starving for answers, just like you. We search the deepest, darkest. Is there anybody, here with us right now? There's anybody still behind? Yes. That will actually communicate. Yes. What refuses to rest and to debunk everything else, using only our portable equipment to capture the voices, the apparitions, and the physical activities of the paranormal. We invite you to join us and share our knowledge. Welcome to the investigations. We're here at the old Ralston Creek in Arvada, Colorado. This is the creek that Lewis Ralston came across on his wagon journey to California in 1850. The same river or creek that Lewis Ralston dipped his gold pan into and pulled out five dollars worth of gold. There have been many claims of everything from apparitions running through the stream to the sounds of old miners having conversations on the edges of the creek. There have also been physical touches and sightings of shadow people on the creek's banks and in the trees. We are here to see if those claims stand true and can hold up to our investigation using the most modern equipment. So sit on the edge of your seats and get ready for our investigation of Arvada's Ralston Creek. Welcome to the Investigations of Hops. We're Hops. We're here on episode two at Ralston Creek. This is a follow-up to Ralston Cemetery, episode one. Ralston's Creek over here, as you can see past us, was the exact place where Lewis Ralston ended up panning for that $5 of gold, which made the historic Old Town Arvada come to life. We're here to investigate the spirits, to investigating the murders and the deaths and the haunted tragedies of all those that were here within the mines when this was all a mine or agriculture. Welcome to Hops. Awesome. Great. Great. You good? We're on low battery right now and it shut off from night vision. No shut off night vision? No. How are we on low battery? That was 99% when I got here. Okay. battery on the ovulus. Wow. So, right here, we have what is the I ovulus. I have paired and matched this with the actual ovulus device. The ovulus device is a frequency database that corresponds frequency pattern and alignment with dictionary patterns. Whatever the device says, is how the spirits are manipulating those frequencies to say something intelligible to us. So we're gonna go ahead and keep rolling the ovulus. So far, before we even got started uh, investigating, two of our batteries have drained completely. The battery on my phone and the battery on our secondary camcorder has drained. This is gonna be a rough one. I'm gonna start rolling on our PSP7 Spirit Box. The PSP7 Spirit Box uh, allows for a frequency sweep through the AM or FM bands. Spirits are capable of communicating between the frequency bands. You will hear as it's sweeping. You can hear the PSP7 Spirit Box switching through each frequency at five frequency switches per second. So the odds of it actually making a voice, the odds of it making a collective understandable or intelligible voice for multiple frequency sweeps is near impossible. That's how we know and we can debunk the fact that it's paranormal or not paranormal.
We're gonna keep walking. We're gonna head down towards the actual bridge where Lewis Ralston panned for that very first $5 pan of gold. And if you can imagine, $5 in the day of gold, man, back in 1850, you just struck some riches. We're gonna go head that way to a place where me, our fellow investigator Travis, has uh, experienced in the past several 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 haunted experiences we're just so lucky enough to catch them on recorder now using high-tech equipment including our psb7 spirit box our k2 meter which adjusts for frequency and finds frequency anomalies if it's a frequency anomaly there are obviously no hidden power lines or anything in this area under a creek. Anything we find on here, it will show from the green light to the red light. And that will show us that something is willing and capable and intelligible to speak to us. We're gonna keep moving until we get to the bridge from here. Right now we're following Ralston's Creek, named after Lewis Ralston. Now we're sweeping so that way we can find a spirit voice. So the spirits can, can communicate with us as opposed to just our EVP recorder, which our fellow investigator, Sarah, is actually holding our EVP device. And she'll be holding this. She'll be holding this device the whole time. This is non-stop, 100% raw electronic voice data. If we can hear with our ears, that recorder in Sir's hand will actually pick up the anomalies and the frequency modulation demodulations of the spirits that want to communicate with us. This PSP7 spirit box will either pick up on camcorder audio or we'll pick it up on EVP audio. Or the spirit will communicate distinctly towards one of the three. At this point, we catch a disembodied voice that we picked up on our digital voice recorder saying hops near near okay was this a spirit manipulating the ovulus device to tell us that we are near somewhere that's important or relevant during this investigation or that we are near a place where we shouldn't be according to this disembodied spirit We have decided, as a collective group of investigators, our goal is to bring you the most up-to-date, most raw footage, audio, video, and physical. Our goal is to record and document everything supernatural. Along with that comes hearing anomalies, comes feeling anomalies so for this we're equipped with digital walkie-talkies that my fellow investigator Travis has we also have hold on one second I just got to chill and I heard I heard something so it's at this moment where I start to feel a chill, an electrical charge, possibly demonstrating a spirit's capabilities of showing me that it can present itself in a physical fashion. Also, just as I'm feeling this, our camera goes completely out of focus.
God. God. What do you if you're here with us, yeah. can you tell us your name? We are equipped with devices that are capable of hearing you. Only you. All you have all you have to do is come up and speak into these devices to let us know you are present and to let us know what you expect from us or what you want in your current state. I was told that there's a little girl that was murdered here. Is she present? What is that? Okay. Three. So she's no longer here. The voice we just heard. Who are you? Chris? Hello, Chris. Hey, my name's Greg. This is Travis, and this is Sarah. We're here to have you communicate with us. Greg, Travis, and Sarah. Did you hear that? I'm gonna go by the river. Did you hear that? Yeah. I want to document that, that our PSP7 spirit box just now stated Greg, Travis, and Sarah. This is the first time during an investigation where we have announced ourselves and got an intelligent response restating our names. I'm not here. Sarah's not here. Travis is not here to make you feel bad, to make you relive your experiences, to make you live in your own perpetual state of unknowing. We're here to understand you, to listen to you. Help. I would love to help you. We would love to help you. Tell us how. Come up to us and we will do it. It sounded like at that point. Did not? It did. Okay, go ahead. You want us to keep walking down this path? Yep. Okay, we're gonna keep walking, and you tell us when you want us to stop. You tell us when you need us to help you move on. If you do not know if you can move on, you can. You can move on whenever you so choose. The only thing keeping you here is you. And if there's something else keeping you here, that's why we are here. We are pure of heart. And pure of promise. We are here to help you move on. All spirits, present, present yourself to us. Can you give me your name? What's up? <laughs> What's up? What's your name? I need you to concentrate real hard and tell me your name. Brian? Did you guys hear Brian? Greg. I'm Greg. Are you Brian? Can you, are you Brian? Yep. All right, Brian. We want you to explain to us what happens 
when we lose run. run do you want us to run are you warning us Brian that does it Greg. now it's worth noting that some of the voices that come through our PSB7 spirit box the fidelity on them is a lot cleaner to the human ear than over the camcorder. So sometimes we hear things a lot clearer in person than we do over the actual SB7 spirit box audio recording through the camcorders. Go ahead and walk down the a little bit. We're gonna keep recording. I want you to go from that end and record whatever you're hearing over on that side. Timestamp for my Oh, our EVP recorder is going off like crazy. It's bright red. Bright red. Our EVP, our K2 meter just, uh, just lit full red. And this is a definitive, sing uh, definitive signal that there's a spirit amongst us or an energy that wants to communicate. If you're here with us right now, Please, uh, come touch the K2 meter again. Touch it once for yes, twice for no. If you're here with us, please touch it. Once for yes, twice for no. You can either t touch this. Speak again. There it goes. You see it? I did. Did you hear that? It does. It did. It did. It's me. Document on the SB7 spirit box and the K2 meter. The K2 meter just went awry, showing lights of intelligible response, saying, it's true, it's me. All right, at the same point, our SB7 spirit box stated those statements. Our fellow investigator is down probably a good 20, 30 feet away. Yep. Yes, sir. And we're hearing voices trying to communicate with us on levels that are unintelligible right now. But it's our job at Hops to put the pieces together. So we're yeah. going to walk that way towards other investigator. He was hearing noises, we're gonna head that way. Just like I briefly mentioned, a lot of these pieces are put together afterward when we have the entire culmination of evidence from all devices. Disturbing words such as what? Our K our K2 meter right now there. is going off. <laughs> our K2 meter is okay. There it goes again. I'm gonna put this down on the ground and I'm gonna ask you some questions as to if you're here. Along with our EVP device, our digital recorder. Okay. Can you tell me your name? I just need you to come up and speak into these devices. If you're here, just please touch one of the devices. This one, right here. I know it looks foreign or alien. It looks unknown and awkward to you. However, this device can hear you better than our human ears can. That's why we have it here, so we can understand you. The problem is, we cannot hear you with this until after you said it. Until long after you said it. This here is our key two meter. This is an array of lights that simply let us know 
that you are here. Did you? This here is our PSP7. This here is our PSP7 spirit box. <laughs> it will sh it it sweeps through the frequencies at a rate that is almost unintelligible. If you can hear that click 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 click, that's how fast it's sweeping through the frequency band, the AM frequency band. So amplitude equals power. Power equals capability. Capability equals understandable speech through these devices. That's why we have the array of devices that we carry for spirits to be able to communicate. They can hear us, we can't hear them. And that's an unfortunate thing. So we're going to focus on the devices. Ask questions and see if we get responses. Are you here with us right now? Can you come up to this device right here and touch it? It won't pick up my own body language, but it'll pick up the fact that you are present. If you don't know where you belong, this will show you that you still exist. Please come up to this device. There it goes. Please come up to this device. Upon review, I noticed we are getting the same voice patterns, the same voices coming through, both male and female. The one you just heard was of a female that we believe to later be called Angel, which very well might be for a woman that drowned. Back in the early 2000s, her name was Angela Porter. Could Angel have been her nickname? Effort. Trav, can you hear me? Travis, can you hear me? We just got several hits on our K2 meter, and as you can see, it's not hitting as I'm talking to you on the walkies, so the walkies aren't triggering the EMF field. So if you could uh, come over here so we can be collective, that would be great. Roger. What's going on? Greg. So at this point, our K2 meter is going off vigorously in intelligent response. I also hear my name stated through the PSP7 spirit box, and it seems to emulate my voice. War six. We're hitting feedback. I don't want to fuck with that. Yeah, there's a girl here. Our iovulus states the word girl. At the same time, our K2 meter is going off, and we hear the disembodied voice of a girl. This is our walkie when it's on. It's illuminated, and as I turn, I noticed that as the walkies are getting pushed for communication, that the K2 meter picks it up sometimes. So in attempt to debunk and keep our evidence clean and pure to the paranormal, I am turning off the walkies, hence closing that circuit of walkie communication and frequency output. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do a session of question and response. We're going to start with what our ovulus has picked up. Travis? So I've been picking up a lot of activity with the ovulus. Uh, one of them was life expectancy, war, and six. It's also talking about the liquid. It's just going off right now. Later in our investigation, we pick up the words lake and pond several, several times. Could this word liquid be a precursor to the findings we capture later on in our investigation? Yep, see? 
I heard it. Are you stating that there was a war here? It said hundred head. Hundred head. Hundred head. Is that is that a name for what you called a travesty of some sort? Buddy. Buddy? That sounded like you, Trap. Okay. There's a legend that says ancient evil spirits can imitate the voices of people to lure the unspecting victim away from the safety of groups in order to possess or kill them. This is very unsettling considering we've heard our voices imitated a few times now. Either you touch me, you touch Travis, or you touch Sarah. Those. Or you can come up and touch the K2 meter. The K2 meter will show your energy. Bill. I'm still here? Howdy. Howdy. Okay, so the K2 meter just went off. Sir? So the K2 meter just went off. Um, it has nothing to do with me standing by it. I can stand over it. I can almost stand on it. And nothing is happening. But it just went off. Bill it went off. Serve captain. Bill Sir? Serve captain. Sir? I want you to come to us and show us on this device right here so we can get visual proof that you're here. Forever, right? Sir? Do you want me to call you sir? Or do you want me to call you a name? Please. Do you want me to please do you want me to call you sir? Well Can you touch this device? Or speak into the PSB seven? Bad past. Just bad past lake. Okay. I said pond before that. Okay. Earlier I mentioned that the ovulus was saying lake and pond. This is where, in our investigation, we start getting lake and pond several, Come several times. Come up to this device right here. Come up to that device. We're going to do questions and answers right now. Were you in the military? Come up, touch this device. Once for yes, twice for no. Were you in the military? No. Okay. Did you want to be in the military? Once for yes, twice for no. We capture the voice on our digital voice recorder saying lights in direct response while lighting up our K2 meter. No? Okay. Right now we're collecting uh, K2 meter hits in direct intelligence response. Did you die right here? We capture a voice on our digital voice recorder saying yes, but we capture on our K2 meter the lights flashing to no. Could this be evidence of multiple spirits communicating in different ways? What? Boy. Boy? You can put you can put the rover in the bag, man. Lake. I said lake again. It's going off. It's going off like crazy right now. Oh. Lake time, mommy. Are you here right Sense. now with us? Gate. Rest. Can you tell me? Summer. Can you tell me your name? Please? Angel. Your name's Angel? Spell. A N G E L. Is that your name? Hey. Anna. Anna. Do people call you Angel? Can you come up, speak to us, or touch the K2 meter? The 
lights on our K2 meter flash once, indicating a yes response, at the same time that we get a vocal yes response through a PSP7 spirit box. Nailed tragic. Oh, angel. We all begin to feel a sudden anticipation and anxiety, accompanied by a really deep kind of sadness. No. Practice. Else. The third time I said lake. Angel? Were you the wife of a miner? Yes. Is your name Angel? Is that a nickname? Yes. Are you stuck here? Yes. Help. Help. Angel, is that... Uh, did we just hear you? Yes. We're going to go ahead and give some... Uh, some video silence to make sure that our documentations are clear responses and intelligible. We're going to keep filming our K2. We're going to keep filming our K2, our PSB7, and our Olympus digital voice recorder. We're going to keep filming these to make sure we're getting intelligible response not just coincidental response. So what I'm doing is I'm giving a couple seconds of audio silence on the camcorder. The camcorder's audio will not be present during this part, so that way we can see if there's spirit communication through the other devices that record audio. This is to ensure that we're getting actual responses from spirits. Well, you have to give it an yes, in, in a yes or no scenario. Um, is that correct that you came back for a boy? Sarah? Sam Faith. Is your name Sam Faith? Yes? Mike. Mike. Is Mike here with you as well? Yes. Do you want us to leave this area and keep going north of here? What direction do you want us to go from right here? Wherever. Did you hear that? This whole area was consumed by greed, plague, death, and murder. Plague from the lack of medical attention, given the times of the early 1800s. Plague, scarlet fever, yellow fever, malaria. All of these swept through the mines, the townspeople. Arvada was known as a plague city. The miners, on the other hand, worked and died for their gold, support their families, to move their families out to a new place. The green death, the green mists inside the mines, which are now the historic grave ditches and grave drops in Arvada, including right here around us. That was caused from monoxide gases, carbon monoxide gases, being released from the earth's soil, leaving a green trace that made the miners sick and eventually killed several, several miners. What if you believed that you were being killed by something paranormal for days on end?
thinking you were haunted. What if you really were? Just like these miners believed. And we believe that they stuck around. Because they were lost and confused and did not know that they could move on. All you see here was not was not a little soccer field where elementary kids played. It was where a man's hard work and the sweat of his brow earned his living. It allowed his family to survive and live another day. And when that faded out, when gold became more important than agriculture, that's when men started dying. And that's where they started dying here. On this landscape that you see before you. It was extremely common to have a deceased miner get thrown in a creek or river, any kind of body of water, to be washed out to be something else's problem. It was very common in the early 1800s during the gold rush to do things like that. Which would explain why there are so many, so many spirits at a state of unrest. But I can't blame them, could you? Thank you for watching Hops. We hope you enjoyed this week's show. We are dedicated to bringing you new evidence of the paranormal each and every week from new haunted locations. Don't forget to check us out at our website, or throw us a like on Facebook, or subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Once again, thank you for watching, and remember, if you're willing to listen, the dead do speak.